Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Rolly Lasermatic 10. Now, since I know that YouTube retention falls off after about a minute or so, I want to list everything up front, and then I'll do a deeper dive into this incredible machine. The Lasermatic 10 is a 10 watt laser, but the company is also planning a 20 and 40 watt version soon. It comes with a full see through enclosure that is also enclosed on the bottom with built in lights on the top and an exhaust fan for smoke. It also has safety switches that disable the laser if it's open during a burn. There is also a five megapixel camera on the enclosure to use with light burn. The machine has linear rails on both the X and Y axis and a nice Z axis height adjuster for the fixed focus laser. There are also drag chains throughout the machine so every wire is exactly in its place. It comes with a magnetic honeycomb all access limit switches, uh, comes with an air assist and a rotary roller with a height adjuster. The machine also comes with built-in Wi-Fi capabilities, a nice material pack, and super detailed instructions. Want to know more? Well, let's get started. So just for a little bit of background on this machine, in addition to the reviews here I do on YouTube, I'm also a member of the Amazon Vine program uh, where I review riveting products such as strapping tape and 3M bolts. So I was more than a little intrigued when I saw a laser engraver pop up in my recommended product queue. Now this was for the Laser Matic 10, but a version without the full enclosure. I got the machine and put it together and was blown away by not only the build quality, but the instructions and overall presentation of this kit. While looking through their wonderful manual, I saw that you could not only set up a 30 minute help session directly with the company, but you could also directly call a phone number that would connect you to Leo, the owner of the company. I blurred it out here in case he ever changes his mind on that one. Since I got the first machine, really before there was even a fully functioning website, I called the number and even though I didn't get an answer since it was so late, I got a call back in the morning and I talked to Leo, the owner of the company. I didn't need any help setting up the machine since it was very straightforward and comes with excellent instructions, but I wanted to know more about this company that, it, that essentially seemed to spring out of nowhere. I talked to Leo and got the fact that this was a small startup company that has really been paying attention to what has been happening in the home laser engraving space and really wanted to put together a machine that incorporates all of the wish list items that might be lacking in some of the other engravers. After I told him who I was and that I wanted to do a review of this machine and kindly offered to send me a more complete version of the Lasermatic 10 that I'll be reviewing today. That is really just to let you know where it came from and a little bit of background on how I got it. So this machine comes in a massive box, which right away told me that I probably would not be doing a lot of assembly. It came extremely well packaged with every part not only wrapped in foam, but also in plastic. The entire base of this machine comes in one already assembled piece and only requires the x-axis gantry be installed on the base. After that, you do have to install four pieces of the acrylic enclosure and hook up some wires. Again, the manual is full color and super easy to follow. The workable area of this enclosed version of the laser is 406 by 400 millimeters. It comes with a fully enclosed see-through laser shield over the entire machine. The cover also comes with a built-in LED light to really give you a full and unobstructed view of whatever it is you are doing. There is also a fan built in with a flexible air duct to move the smoke outside. There is also a built-in camera that I will talk about in a moment and some limit switches as a safety feature that will stop the laser if the enclosure is ever open during the job. The Lasermatic 10 has a 10 watt fixed focus laser with a built in air assist nozzle and a very nice Z axis height adjuster. The spot size of the laser module is listed at 0.08 by 0.08 millimeters and has a top speed of 300 millimeters per second or 18,000 millimeters a minute. To focus the laser, you simply place the included spacer between the workpiece and the laser module, unscrew the tightening screw, and then use the top knob to adjust the height until the bottom of the laser module 
touches the spacer. The spacer is stepped so you can adjust the base on whether you are cutting or engraving with the unit. Once the height is correct, you remove the spacer and tighten the side screw, and then you are ready to go. All of this again runs on a very nice linear rail with a built-in drag chains for the wires, so there is a 0% chance of any of the wires getting in the way. Even the tubing for the air assist is well thought out in its placement for a seamless working experience. Right below the laser is a honeycomb which is magnetic, so it's very convenient to hold down your work pieces. I actually love using the backs of these magnetic name tags that I bought off of Amazon. They have a strong hold and are very shallow to keep out of the way while the laser is working. I highly recommend picking some of these up, and I love the fact that the honeycomb is magnetic versus some of the other aluminum versions I had. The other nice thing about the honeycomb is that it is lifted above the metal base of the floor of the enclosure, so it provides plenty of nice airflow below for cutting. As you can see, the laser beam has really not even affected the bottom of the enclosure, as the beam has dissipated by the time it reaches it. The Lasermatic 10 also comes with a built-in 5 megapixel camera that will allow you to see your workable area and place your parts directly on the image of your piece right in Lightburn. While the camera lens calibration is already done for you at the factory, you do have to run an alignment process in Lightburn to make sure that your image corresponds to the placement you are seeing. It's not an exact science, but it will get you very close within a reasonable amount and should allow the average user to line things up fairly well. However, if you have been following me for a little bit, you know that I am a fan of using absolute coordinates, and this machine comes with limit switches on every axis, so it definitely can handle that. So what I did was I head over to my local lumber yard and pulled a piece of scrap 3 quarter inch MDF out of their dumpster, and they cut it for me for about $2. I then removed the honeycomb and put my piece in and burned a 400 by 400 millimeter grid on the board. This way, in addition to being able to use the camera, I also have a way to 100% square up my work pieces up to the laser so I can be exactly sure that I know where it is cutting or engraving, which is a huge help. Being able to use both of these with a quick swap is great and has already come in handy. The machine is open source, so it will work with free programs such as Laser Gerbil and paid programs like Lightburn. I highly recommend Lightburn as a program of choice for many reasons, but know that you do have options if you want to go another route. There is also an option to control the machine via Wi-Fi, but at the time of this review, that is really just to send G-code to the machine and not to be operated through Lightburn with Wi-Fi, but it seems like that might be on a future firmware upgrade. So the laser also comes with machine definitions that can be imported directly into Lightburn which not only sets up the machine right out of the box with proper settings for the camera and workable area, but also for the rotary that I will talk about uh, in a little bit. It has some really cool features that I have not seen on another laser so far. The kit also comes with a material pack that has a test piece of wood in it that has already been engraved and cut on to give you an idea of how this machine will perform. In the manual, there is also a chart with the recommended parameters for the items inside of the kit that to get you started. These are great, but you will probably still have to do your own set of tests on your own materials. Uh, just to make sure I could get the same results, I followed the recommendations and got some decent results. The first test I did was on a piece of cherry wood that came with the machine, and I burned the image of Mount Rushmore that I had used many times before, and it came out pretty nice. I then wanted to test out some of the aluminum business cards, so I ran this image at 8,000 millimeters per minute at 25% power. Uh, I was using the black paint on white preset in the adjustment right click uh, in Lightburn to get the negative image. This again turned out very nice at 318 dpi. So after this, I wanted to test out the cutting ability of the machine. It's 10 watts, so certainly not my most powerful laser, but I wanted to test it, so I cut out the circles in three millimeters of basswood. This machine also comes with an air assist and pump, so I hooked that all up and turned on the pump and tested out different passes and speeds on this three millimeters of wood. In my first test, with one to four passes from 175 to 250 millimeters per minute, 
it just cut through everything, so it didn't really tell me a lot. So I ran the test again, and this time I went from 300 millimeters to 450 millimeters per minute. And again, the same thing happened where it just cut through everything in one pass. So I ran it again at up to 575 millimeters per minute, and again, it cut through pretty good. I felt like a good clean speed was at about 350 millimeters per minute. So I found this heart box online and decided to make a few for Valentine's Day. These came out amazing and cut out extremely clean. These files were really nice. It cut really nice on this machine, and I'm sure I'm going to be making more of these. I then wanted to run a test on a white ceramic tile using the Norton White Tile method. This method essentially consists of burning the image onto a white tile that has been painted with a spray paint that contains titanium dioxide. In my case, it's Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Ivory Silk. After engraving, you clean the tile with acetone and you are left with a permanent image. I tested it on a few test tiles first, and then I tried it out on these three tiles at once. I burned these at 2400 millimeters per minute at 35% power. I was also using the basic built-in preset in the adjustment image tab in Lightburn. As you can see, the job came out amazing. Again, I was really impressed with the detail that this laser was able to achieve on these tiles. The last test that I wanted to do before getting into the rotary was one of these little stainless steel tags that came with the material pack. Now the instruction manual had me changing something that I had not heard of doing before, and that was adjusting the laser pulse frequency on the laser. Again, I had, I had not even heard of doing this before, but I followed the manual and changed the frequency from 10,000 Hz to 1,000 Hz. After doing this, I just placed the tag on my spoil board without any kind of coating or treatment whatsoever, and burned my logo onto the tag. It came out perfect, and once again, I had to make sure I changed that frequency back to 10,000 Hz after it was done. Okay, so now onto the rotary, which has a few really cool features on it. The first thing that I love about this setup are those little pins you see in the base of the enclosure. What those are for is aligning the rotary so that the rollers are perfectly square to your laser. This means while burning on your tumblers or glass or whatever, you can be certain that the laser will burn everything at an exact 90 degree angle to your part. That is huge. What's even better is that the height adjuster on the end of the roller is also aligned with pegs corresponding to the roller positions that you are using. So even with the height adjuster, you can be sure that your part is square. To take this even further, there are presets already set up in Lightburn that will allow you to move the laser to a predefined position to place the laser spot directly over the middle of the cup. So with everything set up, I burn the image onto my tumbler at 8,000 millimeters per minute at 25% power, and it again came out extremely nice. Uh, you can tell that the image came out perfectly perpendicular to the tumbler. I really could not have been happier with how this came out. The other thing that I wanted to point out here is that you have enough clearance to pull this off in the first place with just a regular setup of the machine. The rollers are low profile and the Z height of the gantry gives you enough clearance that you can do tumblers without having to add any extra height adjustments to the machine. It's all still contained inside of the enclosure. Now this brings me to one of my only missed opportunities of this machine. It really should come with a little level block in the kit for making sure your cup or tumbler is level to your laser. It's not, a, it's not huge, and you can buy a pack of these, like this one from Amazon, for a few dollars, uh, but if that had come with the machine, it would have been perfect. Perhaps a rotary chuck would also have been a nice addition, but as a first laser for a new company, I really can't complain. The only other thing that I changed was the sensors on the enclosure door to remove the feature that turns the laser off if the door is open. The kit comes with jumpers that you can use on the control board for this purpose, and it even mentions it in the manual. I just found that at times that if you didn't really push down on the right corner of the lid, the sensors would not engage and the laser would not fire. It was a hassle that I just really didn't want to deal with, so I just bypassed the system, which is really easy to do. The only other thing that you may run into is that with this fully enclosed version of the machine, you wouldn't be able to pass through larger pieces, uh, but the bottom of the machine is removable, 
So you could take that off uh, and remove that plate if you wanted to. It, it just might be a hassle to take that on and off. So for my overall thoughts on this machine. So if you couldn't tell from the title of the video and the review so far, I really like this machine. I really think it might be my favorite machine so far, and I've reviewed quite a few. It really ups the bar in quality and honestly gives some of the bigger brands a run for their money. Now, this is a brand new company, and I obviously can't speak to their ability to scale, but if you can get your hands on one of these machines, I highly recommend it. Uh, if this is their first offering in this space, I can't wait to see what they come out with next. If I had just a short wish list of features that I would like to see, since it's clear they are listening to their consumers, it would be an automatic Z height adjustment, uh, a rotary chuck, an automatic air assist, some higher power laser modules, and that little level that I talked about. And that's really it. I wanted to thank Leo over at Rolly for sending me this machine for a review. And again, I can't wait to see what you come out with next. If you like this machine, feel free to share this video around as the more these machines start to improve, the better it is for everyone. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for even more content regarding laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.